first at uh, 11 o'clock that night. So you have all these incidents. It's really setting the stage for a an internal civil war here in the United States. And it's going to be people versus the establishment. And I, I think, I don't know, where where's the average citizen going to fall in, in this mess? And that's what I'm worried about. Um, I'm ready to defend my family. Mm. And I hope other people out there are ready to defend their families if it comes to that. But Obviously, we don't want it to come to that. There's so many other things we could be working towards instead of shooting each other. That's right. Just like we had uh, Mr. Pittman on the show yesterday, who is a candidate for sheriff down in the Houston area. And we were asking him these questions that we're talking about now. And he said, I want to make sure that it doesn't get to that point in Houston. You know, we want, and that's what we need to have. We need to have more community togetherness. I think a great example of that was uh, in Charleston when I was down there. You know, we've seen all the things in Ferguson and Baltimore and Cleveland and every place else. But I get out to Charleston and it's, you know, police, they're out there, but they're not out there in the MRAPs. They don't have guns aimed at people. They're just interacting with the crowd. And, you know, I think the worst thing that happened while I was out there was, you know, just some minor graffiti or something like that. It was no big deal really after it happened. It was a horrible tragedy. But the way people reacted to it was a very positive way. And hopefully we can see more of that going on around the country. Well, and these incidents are having them being brought out like this is making people stand up and talk about it and at least pick a side. And you, you find out who's on the side of law and order and who's on the side of, you know, chaos and murder and degradation, because we do have to get beyond. It seems like we haven't made, I, I think since nine 11, our country has really not progressed any, in any direction like it should. We've, we've, we've stagnated for 10 years after nine 11 under, under George Bush, or I guess they ate, Eight and a half, seven and a half years after George Bush. Mm -hmm. Now with Obama, race relations have gone down. Um, just as the police state is ramping up, and it started, you know, it started before Bush, but he really ramped it up with the with the creation of Homeland Security. Yeah, and we've seen uh, various people come out, uh, Sheriff Clark, many others, uh, coming after the you know, the Obama administration, Eric Holder, uh, these people, uh, you know, Al Sharpton, whoever else, for uh, kind of ratcheting up this rhetoric. And of course, we do want to talk about this stuff. We don't want to sweep it under the rug and act like, act like it didn't happen. But when you have people who are so, have such a concerted effort to hype these racial situations, but then again, they ignore things like what happened to Kelly Thomas and many other people that you know people don't know the names of. They're not as famous as uh, Michael Brown or Eric Garner, but they were, uh, they encountered the police in a very violent situation nonetheless. Yeah, and you know, it's like what Sheriff Clark said the other day. He's like, I don't like people using the qualifier. There's some bad cops. You know, he wants to take the stance of of a vanguard and that cops. It seems like he's saying cops can do no wrong, which I think, you know, if you do bad things, you should be prosecuted. No, absolutely. You know, you shouldn't be able to because you have a shield, you get a, a free pass, especially when you do something wrong and it's and it's caught on tape. Because a lot of these incidences don't get caught on tape, and now it's it's finally starting to happen because people have. Uh, uh, you know, cell, cell phones, phones are ubiquitous. Um, can we go to a couple calls? There's uh, Mike in Oregon's been holding on for an hour. I know we got like a minute before we go to break here. Um, Mike, you were talking. You have you. You want to go to the bottom of the rabbit hole? What's uh, what's your story? Yeah. Hello. Hi, Rob. And hi, Chikari. Thanks for taking my call. Um, yeah, I was kind of preparing to talk with both Alex and Mr. Nichols, and but essentially, I, I just wanted to let everybody know who listens to the show. Uh, oh know that listening to all of the different various topics that Alex brings up and talks about and all of you hardworking reporters bring up and talk about on the show, you know, they need to listen to this stuff. And, you know, if they're, if they're uninformed about all the things that are going on in the government and in, the, in international politics and stuff, um, you know, I, I became aware of... Let me stop you, Mike. We're going to be right back. I'll let you finish that story. We're going to be right back after this break. This is Rob Dew with the Infowars.com. Alex Jones Show, Riding Shotgun, Jakari Jackson. We'll be right back after this short break. This is Rob Dew and Jakari Jackson doing the fourth hour of the Alex Jones Show today. And uh, we're going to get back to Mike telling, he was explaining to people out there, if you're a listener for the first time or just tuning in, how much information... He is able to get just by listening to the Alex Jones show. And let me tell you, Alex is an encyclopedia of information. Yep. I, I bring up stuff to him all the time. He goes, oh, yeah, don't forget about this, this, and this. Adding all the other elements that really make a story and, and show you the story behind the story. Because the mainstream media likes to portray one version of the story. And what I like what we do here is we can take it and spread it all out and show you all the facets of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, before we go any further, I do want to do a plug for Super Male Vitality. And I actually have a little story of this, but you can go to InfoWarsLife.com. It is our most popular product. And, uh, you know, it's got a lot of interesting herbs in here. And 
I can't even pronounce half of them. Uh, you're going to have to check it out for yourself. It is amazing stuff. And let me tell you the story. I'm 41 years old, and I started playing basketball again recently. I've uh, torn both my ACL ligaments, one of which I fixed, one of which I didn't. I just wear a pretty beefy brace when I play. And the other day, I play uh, every once in a while on a Sunday over at a church, and it's pickup games. And I played one game, and I was dead tired after that. And I looked in my bag, and I had Super Male Vitality. I also have Secret 12 in there. But I said, I'm going to take three, uh, three dropper fulls of Super Male Vitality. Went, drank some water, sat out a game, went back in, played three more games without resting. Oh, wow. And, you know, it, it's run. It's full court. It's, it's running. But let me tell you, the Super Male Vitality gave me the energy to keep going. And it just, you know, Shane talks about how it helps him increase his workouts. That's Shane Steiner, who's... Uh, a pretty big guy who does yeah. a lot of working out. I, I don't do that that much. I do some pull-ups and push-ups and ride the bike. But let me tell you, this really gave me the energy and sustained energy. And it didn't. It wasn't like a, a head high where you're like buzzing. I, I just didn't feel tired. And I was totally amazed by it. I use it all the time. But that was it was just one case that happened on Sunday that I can really you know tell the people out there this is a, this product really works. And uh, so check it out infowarslife.com for Super Male Vitality. And uh, while you're on the site, go check out the video for uh, go to infowars.com forward slash money bomb and check out what we're going to be doing for the money bomb on September 16th going into 17th, 27 hours of broadcast. I guess it might be 28 now if we're doing the uh, second, uh, the fourth hour of the show. Oh, yeah, that's right. So we are. It looks like we might be adding an hour. Uh, jo Jones today decided we're going to just start doing the fourth hour. So, so plenty, plenty of original content. So th if you're a first time exactly. viewer, that's a great place to have your friends and family jump on. There you go. Hey, Mike, finish up your story, uh, what you were talking about with why you like uh, tuning into the Alex Jones Show. Yeah, it definitely validates a lot of things that I've already perceived. You know, as a foster kid and then later as an advocate for other foster children, I had a front row seat in the 90s of how not only they profiteer off of the foster care system, you know, financially, but how it becomes like a... a well, foster kids become like a pool of, of people that the government can medically experiment on. And so as a, from a young age, I realized, you know, how tyrants behave, and it's given me a lot of insight. And so when I talk about the bottom of the rabbit hole, um, I just the point I want to make is that the people who populate this thing that we call the New World Order are, whether you know, whether they're a petty bureaucrat or all the way up to people like the Clintons, you know, what it is is that these people don't have a spiritual or emotional connection with the world around them. And this is, you know, the source of their strength, but it's also their greatest weakness. Uh, I almost think that we don't need to necessarily fight offensively so much against the new world order rather than just sort of stand back and let these people destroy themselves while doing our best to, like, provide for common self-defense amongst all of us who love liberty and want to protect that. Um, so, yeah, that was basically my point. The bottom of the rabbit hole is people who, you know, they have no connection to the world around them, and they come up with all these delusional plans about how they're going to control and manipulate and hurt other people. But in the end, their blind spot is that they don't realize that, you know, their un disconnection from the world is their own undoing. They, so yeah, they are the source of their own uh, downbringing, essentially. Now, let me ask you this. Were you ever prescribed uh, a psychotropic drugs while you were in CPS? My goodness. Um, you know, not only was I prescribed several others it is it's it's just a horrific story um i've pretty much been on all the different ones that they had out and you know you have psychiatrists who just are constantly changing what they say your diagnosis is and constantly prescribing new medications and i and from my perspective as i grew up and became an adult and looked back into this from that perspective i realized what they're really doing it, it was doing you know test research to see you know how these medications really did affect people as far as psychologically and health wise. And that, um, yeah, you, you know, were being a guinea you know, pig essentially. I was on actually a lot of the pills I was on actually later on, there was huge lawsuits over, you know, how they should never have been prescribed to adolescents and stuff. So you know, there's just a, this huge dark underbelly in the pharma industry, but it, it, you know, it's just a little, it's like Alex Jones calls things a Rosetta stone to understand things with, mm -hmm. you know, it, yeah, I totally agree. Mike, thank you for sharing that story. That is, is truly awful the way CPS treats people, especially young children, as guinea pigs. Now, we're going to be right back with uh, more calls. Joe Biggs is going to come in, give us in, some more updates on this uh, police shooting up north of Chicago. And we'll be right back. It's Rob Dew with the InfoWars.com, Alex Jones Show. All right, strap yourselves in. We have 30 more minutes of the show today. This is the live fourth hour of the Alex Jones Show. I'm your host, Rob Dew, riding shotguns, Jakari Jackson. We also have Joe Biggs. Joe's going to give us some updates on this shooting in Fox Lake. 
Uh, Joe, you were listening in on the police scanner. What is going on there? So there's a lot of stuff going on. They have essentially the entire town on lockdown, like martial law. Mm -hmm. They've got that whole area. The, the schools, the local schools are shut down. And uh, from what I've been hearing on the police scanner, the police are going into neighborhoods. They're scanning and looking at the license plates and then matching it with the address on the registration to see if that vehicle belongs in that driveway. And then from there, they're going in and looking at the homes. There's nothing Orwellian about that. No, way. negative. I mean, that, that's there. That's what's supposed <clears throat> to happen. So it's much like we, like you mentioned earlier, what we saw in Watertown, Massachusetts, with the Boston bombing, the door-to-door -door searching, going through, and all that. So if you live in Fox Lake and you might have a warrant out there and you have nothing to do with this, it's probably not going to be a safe place for you to be today. Wow. Anybody out there, you got to think anyone out there who's been laying low under the radar, it's all going to come to light today. Yeah, boy, that is definitely uh, a crazy situation. That's pretty unprecedented that they would scan the license plate. I mean, there's a you, no fly zone. Yeah, if you go and drop your kids off at the babysitter, you know, you just happen to be in the driveway at that time. Then, yeah. You know, come. Oh, yeah, there's, I a mean, lot of, there's a lot of different instances. They're, they're not playing around. ATF just tweeted out that they've arrived on scene. So the ATF there, uh, U.S. Marshals as well, uh, SWAT team, local police department, all the police departments in that area, the different counties have come together and kind of help in this search. They've The helicopters are in the air. Uh, the guys are in the full uh, riot gear like we saw in Ferguson, the guys in the green, you know. Mm -hmm. So the same thing, everything's, it's a very tense situation. Uh, I'll be surprised if they catch these people tonight, but for sure, probably by tomorrow morning. You got to think, after these guys, three people trying to stay together, running from the cops, they're going to get tired. Uh, we'll see yeah, what happens. They're going to get sloppy and eventually get caught. Well, because this is something that I don't think was planned out. Like, Houston was an execution. This guy was on the hunt for a lone cop. He found him, shot him, killed him. This happened to be a situation around 8 a.m. The cops saw a vehicle was acting suspicious. The people inside, he pulled him over, called for backup. And uh, I just found out too earlier that the cops were so close trying to get to him, they could actually hear the gunfire happen when he was shot. They found him dead in a marsh with his gun missing and uh, uh, pepper spray and maybe some other equipment, you know, handcuffs, tasers, whatever he had on him. So that's all been taken. So that's currently going on right now. Wow, and you also mentioned there was a, an instance where um, a female cop had seen blood in an abandoned car, and what? what yeah, they, they 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 saw. Uh, I think it was like an abandoned house, mm -hmm. and there was an SUV parked. It was a red SUV, and she went in by herself, looking around, and saw drops of blood. And then another police officer eventually showed up, and I'm sitting here like watching a horror movie, like, "Hey, lady, don't go in there by yourself. What are you doing? What are you doing?" <laughs> So it, it's definitely intense. I and I advise people, hey, if you got a police scanner, listen into what's going on. Yeah, it's still legal to do at this point, um, but I'm sure they will soon eventually uh, cut that off. Here's an interesting story out of the New York Times, and this is um, in Budapest right now in Hungary. They're having th this seems to be like the thoroughfare for all the immigrants who are coming from Africa and the Middle East. They go through uh, Budapest to get to Western Europe. And basically, the train station has now cut off service to the migrants amid the crisis. And the migrants are protesting. They want their free ride into Western Europe. A lot of them are going into Germany, and then they're going into camps. They're being set up in these uh, relocation camps where they well, can do all the, uh, the paperwork to find out if they're going to get asylum or not. Well, well, kind of like the little camps they set up uh, during the whole Ebola scare with the, uh, the immigration influx that happened last summer. All these different places were popping up. They were buying those old hotels. They were setting up these FEMA camp type things, buying prisons and all that, and then holding them in there, you know, on our dollar. But it's funny because Donald Trump comes out and says, you know, that everyone coming from Mexico over in here is a, a murderer, a killer, a rapist, a criminal of some sort. And that uh, the fact that Donald Trump wants to build this uh, wall is racist. But if you look at the southern border of Mexico, they have a giant wall that goes across. They think of the, that a wall is a good idea, too. So I think that's kind of uh, a little bit out there. Yeah, and yeah, well, I think there's a lot of, I don't know if he said everybody is, but there, I, don't, I think there's better ways to patrol that area than using a wall. I think we have I the agree. technology. The autonomous drone that, that Glenn Spencer came up with, the seismic technology that could exactly. read the, exactly. send He's someone coming that. through. Oh, I, I see someone coming through the studio uh, right now. He's go. crashing the show. <laughs> Alex. <clears throat> <laughs> Need a fourth microphone in here. No, no, I actually came in here. Yep. Get my cell phone. I gave it gave to it. one of the guys. Oh, Here's good, your good, good. Oh, your keys are yeah. in uh, Anthony's office. Great. I got my crap everywhere. <laughs> no, no, no. I just watched the video that I'm going to perch on on uh, Jakari's shoulder right here. I just came and watched the video, and um, Darren McBreen is in there blowing it up. Yeah. Of the shooting in San Antonio, and I was reading. They never charged those cops. This went on a while ago. I'm glad the station released it. Those that cop executes that guy that had done nothing. Yeah. With his hands up. 
This is why people are angry. Just like I'm angry if you execute a cop or if you execute, you know, a pot-bellied guy down in San Antonio.